So here's my next project then is to um, go ahead and take this motor apart and see if I can't get this thing after I take it apart and clean it up if I can't if this thing doesn't turn any faster since it's um, turning too slow and I know it's getting enough uh, it's getting enough voltage also it was um, frozen up before until I put a little bit of oil on it didn't want to it didn't want to turn so I guess that's telling me there's a problem with the bearing somewhere so I'm going to go ahead and heat up the motor pulley it's got no I have to mention also it has no electronic speed control whatsoever so I'm going to go ahead and try to take it apart without tearing it all up I'm going to go ahead and heat this up first and then see if I can't get this thing out might be smarter for me if I <clears throat> unsolder this here but I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it with it on and see if that works out if not I can always unsolder the, solder the wires there okay let me go ahead and get the heat gun so I think this pulley here I think this is also glued on um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hold the, I've got the heat gun here, and I'm just going to hold it on there like that, and then after a minute or two, I'm going to try to pry it off, and then um, if that doesn't work, I'll try another minute, and I'll just keep going until it gets hot enough, and eventually this thing should, this thing should actually come off. I think I'm going to go ahead and it's going to be hot so I'm going to get a pair of gloves and I'm going to try to um, use these little teaspoons and then just push it up and out let me um, get my gloves so let me see if that's enough No, not yet, but it's definitely coming. So, let me keep at it. So that was about another minute, minute or so longer. I think something's coming up. Okay, now I can't forget this thing is also really hot. Okay, that was it. Now I can't zoom in here enough, but I think I see some residue of glue down in here. So that copper plate came off easy enough. And it looks like this here's got to be in a certain position. There's an indentation here. So, that's got... so now I'm trying to get... I'm going to try to take this plate off. Maybe I can wedge a screwdriver down in there or a, a pair of really fine needle nose. So this is the only way that's, that I'm able to get this thing out. Now hopefully I can get a get a pair of pliers in there soon and then go ahead and twist twist up okay well came out so I am gonna have to get probably get a little block of wood or something when I put this thing put this thing back together Next, I'm going to remove this band here. I'm 
now come these screws and then hopefully I can get the thing back together let me pull these screws and now I also have to add there's a little tiny little washer in there that needs to be put back in place too. There also seems to be a little like little tiny felt washer. I don't know if that's supposed to be impregnated with oil. Could very well be. Um, I think I'm going to put a little tad of oil on there. Could very well be to keep out. That's almost like some kind of permanent lubrication. So now I put a little tiny little dab of oil down here in this bearing. And I put some oil on here. And I put a little, I put some oil on that, uh, on that felt. I think this might have to, might be, as I said, it might be part of some kind of lubrication system. And this thing here, I think some looks seems to be come some kind of a mechanical speed control system, like a governor system or something. So I think that theoretically by turning these two little screws here, there's a screw here and a screw on the other side, I should be able to advance the speed of the motor. I'm gonna start out with a, like doing like a half a turn and then <clears throat> go from go from there. Only problem is the big hassle of doing this because you got to take the motor completely apart every time, which is um, I'd say kind of like a headache. So now I've actually advanced both of those screws one complete turn, and hopefully that brings it up a little bit. I had to use a little, a little tiny flathead screwdriver that fit exactly in there. Um. Now I just got to see if all of this, if all this basically works. Oh, one more thing in case you're wondering, I checked that capacitor. The capacitor is good too. And we can't forget to put this piece in, which actually, this little nub protrudes right from there. And it goes on like this from the other side. I'm having problems getting this piece back in here. This is supposed to be sticking out like this from the other side so what I'm going to do is simply lay this in there um, put some hot put some hot glue on here with the glue gun and then when I'm done I'm scrape it off because every time I'm trying to put this back in it keeps shifting in position and falling off so you can see here I just got to, um, I just glued this in here temporarily and now I can hopefully put everything back together so I just put the motor back in and um, I just tried it out for a second. I didn't measure the speed yet, but I, I put in a music cassette and now the singer sounds like Mickey Mouse. So evidently I turned those um, governor screws too far. I want one complete rotation. So what I'm going to have to do is um, maybe go only half rotation. I don't know. Here's how this sounds now. Conductor on the Underground Railroad, a fugitive slave herself. Is it? Her courage and shrewdness were widely known. The singer sounds like, um, from in singer sounds like Mickey Mouse, so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, put in a 3000 hertz uh, frequency tape, and I'm going to go ahead and measure the frequency. It should be somewhere around 3000 hertz, but I got a feeling this is going to be a lot higher so here's my test setup I'm just gonna take the frequency that's coming out of the here headphone jack and for that I a while ago I got myself a jack like this and then I just soldered some basically some wires to it and I'm gonna go ahead and take a reading between the ground and one of the uh, signal wires since it is this is a stereo jack one, of, one here, you see one wire is now hooked up. That's just what I had. The wire is what I had laying around at home. So 
can basically use about anything. And I'm going to hook that up to the frequency counter of my uh, digital multimeter. Of course, I have uh, wow and flutter meters that are probably better to use, but it's too much of a hassle now. So let me just hook this thing up. And we're just going to be using my homemade 3000 hertz, uh, reasonably accurate um, test tape. It's just a 3000 hertz sine wave. Okay, I'm getting a reading now, and it's supposed to be 3000 hertz, and I'm actually showing about 3500 hertz, so that's way too high. That explains the Mickey Mouse voice of the singer, so I'm going to go ahead and back that governor. Um, Go back the other way with it, those two governor set screws. So here we are again, and I'm going to be adjusting this screw there where the tip of my screwdriver is, and there's another one. I don't think these here, I don't think they're adjustable, and of course, here on the end of these things are right here, they're Again, there's contacts in these things. Right there, just these contacts. Once that motor reaches a certain speed, I, I can push this a little bit. I think they're spring loaded. I can't be messing around with these too much. Um, these these contacts here. Once this motor reaches its normal operating speed, these contacts are going to open until the once it's once it's open the motor's gonna have no power and then the motor's gonna slow down again and then of course once it slows down again the contacts are gonna close and then it's gonna speed up and this cycle is just gonna repeat itself um, as I mentioned earlier I did one complete turn and I didn't expect it to make that much of a difference so I'm gonna be backing out now probably half or half a turn or three quarters of a turn and then see what difference that makes.